Matt Sandershanks here for creativecow.net. Today we are going to do an edge mat, a core mat and a garbage mat um, to complete the can on this cow project. Um, as you will have seen if you had a look at my previous tutorial, um, I've got a cow on a green screen that was just shot with a domestic DV camera and a background still that was taken with a digital still camera. Um, this part, this region here, is um, the de-artifacting that we did in the first tutorial, which um, just tries to address some of the art and DV stepping artifacts that you'll get around the edges of, um, of DV and HDV footage. Right, now if we want to pull a key, let's go down here. First thing we're going to do is actually do a DOD. Uh, this is handy for just cropping out anything that might be in the edges of your frame, like a lighting stand, or maybe the green screen doesn't quite extend all the way, etc. etc. So I'm just going to bring this in. I want to actually maintain a little bit of the, the shadow that's there, so I'm going to crop it too tight there, or we'll crop it quite tight up on the top. Right. Now, next thing I'm going to do is let's do a key. So I'm just going to use key light, you can use whatever you like. It's just uh, good for a quick demonstration. Now if I just plug this in and I choose green as our colour, you'll see that we've got some sort of key happening there. It's a little bit transparent there if we have a look at the alpha channel by hitting A. You can see I've still actually got a little bit of DV artifacting in and around here. Now if I was actually going to do this properly I'd uh, most likely do a separate key pass um, for the shadow region and indeed I'd actually probably do a, a se second version of our uh, DV artifacting and change the blur and probably ramp up the blur quite a bit for the shadow region by itself mat it off and pipe it back in but uh, for this I'm not going to worry about it. Now you also see that there's quite a bit of grey in around here now uh, a few of you will be saying well why don't you just go into the screen, screen range and crunch it up you can do that but uh, as soon as we start scrunching you start to get quite hard edges on your uh, on your mat, which is not what you want. You want a little bit of grey still in there. You want to maintain any wispy hair, etc., etc. With DV, yes, that is going to be difficult. But um, but just with you know, if you're using higher end um, cameras, etc., um, you know, you you definitely don't want to be you know sort of crushing things because not only are you using losing sort of semi-transparent regions that are naturally in your shot, you also uh, you're also getting the sharper you make it, the more uh, chattery your edge is likely to be. So um, on this, um, oh, probably the other tip I can give you is um, you know, sometimes it's good just to give it a little bit, just to get crank up just a tiny bit to solidify it a bit, but I wouldn't go too far. And the other thing to have a look at is fine controls, because often you'll find that um, playing around with your mid-tone balance will um, help things out. Um, or likewise, sort of your gain, again, the tone's are usually quite a good one for playing around with. But um, I'm not going to not going to play with any of those, I'm actually just going to leave it all on zero to start with. And I'll do the same with our screen range, so there it is, zero. Right, next thing is, um, so we've got this, and it's not exactly great. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of that. And what we're going to do is we're going to build, we're going to build a chain. This is going to be our edge mat because I'm quite happy with the the way the edge is going here. But we've already seen that the problems with this are that there's still a semi-transparent region here, which should be solid. Same here. So um, and you can see here as well, there's a little bit of garbage in and around here. So what I'm going to do, we'll actually clean it up just mildly get rid of the, most of the speckle there. But um, I'm going to do a core mat based on this. So we'll go back to colour. I, I like to always put everything into the visible spectrum so we can actually see it easily without having to hit you know, my A key and my C key all the time. So um, what I'm going to do is um, just going to do a reorder. So with the reorder, you come down here and you tell it what you want to do. So I'm just going to put the alpha is just going to suddenly become all the channels. So now I can see that as a black and white quite quickly. 
So I'm going to duplicate those, copy, paste. So that's our edge map. Now I'm going to make our core map. Now for our core map, now I'm going to crunch this up because basically all I want is the solid. I don't really care about the edges because I'm going to be using the soft edges on here. So um, usually what you do is something along the lines of what I've just done there, crank it up, doesn't really matter. If you have any little speckles in the foreground that have suddenly turned black because of the um, crunching we've done, what you could do is use a median filter to uh, try and smooth that out or a dilator road. We don't need to do that in this case, so I'm not going to bother. Right, now in order to, like, if we were to add this into our, um, in with our um, edge, um, it wouldn't actually be that great at the moment. Um, just go, let's see, we've got this happening, not exactly brilliant, so we, we want to choke this in a little bit. We'll go into erode. And just going to chew that in a little bit. And the other thing I'm going to do is just going to put a quick blur in there as well. Just to blend it a bit. Okay. So what this has done, if we compare before and after, it's gone and filled the gaps in. So the next thing we want to do is we actually want to get rid of any any little bits of speckle that might still be out here. If we move around it's pretty black there but no, it's actually not too bad. It'll be because of my the little bit of uh, screen gain I did. But um, what we want to do is do take another branch off here so you hold down Hold down shift and we'll do another dilator road. This time, instead of eroding it away, we want to increase it. So, we can increase the mat out. You can see that it's growing up. Then what we're going to do is we're going to do a minimum. What this will do is it will add all the black region that's in here. To here. So we'll just have a quick look. This might actually be a bit OTT. It is. So what we'll do again, I might just put a blur on there. And I'm just going to increase this out because I want to actually want to retain some of that shadow. As I said before, I'd probably actually do the shadow region separately, but just for this exercise. Okay, that'll do. So, what we've got here is this has gone through and keyed the edge. Then we've gone through, really choked, it, choked up the mat completely. Then this here has provided a core, which is filled in the middle. And then down this branch, um, this has got rid of anything that was just speckly or anything on the outside and that's added the black back in there so edge mat, core mat and your garbage mat around the outside or your holdout mat so we'll go for a switch mat here so I'm going to hold down shift drop that in the mat channel then I'm going to go for an over. So we'll composite our foreground over our background. So there it is. It's a little bit, we've got the uh, green wrap happening which isn't brilliant, but uh, we'll deal with that in the next, uh, next tutorial.
And the other thing I want to do is I actually want to move it down in frame. So I will, I'll just do that now. We'll uh, get, a, get a move happening from transforms. So I'll just do a move 2D because it just allows me to rescale it if I so wish. So I'm just going to sit him down in here. Okay, so what you've just seen is a really quick rundown of um, one way in which to produce a core mat, an edge mat, and a garbage mat for um, our little DV key. Now, they're in shape, as in most compositing systems, you've got many ways of uh, extracting keys, etc. So, um, what I'm just going to do is just run over a few other little um, Oh, techniques. Basically, the edge is key. Whenever you're looking at, um, at pulling a key, what you want is that nice edge where you've got a little bit of grey still in there, um, and you haven't got either, everything all crunched up. Um, as you as you can see, you can easily fill in the middle of the mat with um, a core mat, or um, construct a uh, holdout mat uh, or garbage mat around the outside. So um, another thing you can do. Is, uh, so we came into here and we hit uh, DOD'd our little cow. Um, what we could do is do a really rough key, uh, reorder it, dilate it so it's expanded out, and I've inverted it here. And then what I've done is I've fed that back into another key light. So what you can do is tell it only key the green that's within that mat. So you're sort of doing a rough key before actually pulling your main key. That can that can help. Um, sometimes you can just use that without needing to um, go and do the core mat um, and uh, garbage mat, which you've just seen. But um, yeah, this is another another technique to look at. Okay, other things. Um, as I say, there are many ways of pulling keys. Um, you can use Primat, of course, which is the alternative to Keylight and that can give you a different result. Um, and of course you can pull a luminance key. In this case it's not going to do much. Um, again, you're just looking for edges. If you can find it, get a decent edge on something, you can add you know, multiples of these together to build up your, um, your mat. Um, another thing you can do is you could have a look through all your channels and just see if there's one that, that does um, that looks particularly good. So you go through reorder to blue to red, etc. Um, and then you just use an expand to crunch it all up. Again, you know, you could add this to another mat, so you could add that to our um, prime mat, for example, if this had a uh, better edge. Okay, um, the other thing you can do is you can do build your own build your own key here effectively. Uh, there's a couple of techniques here. It's basically just comparing two channels, um, in this case, um, blue and green. So um, here I've got a reorder that's the blue. I've reordered the green. Um, I've inverted the, the green one. I've used a contrast loom, or, or you could um, actually just use uh, a expand as well, uh, just to crunch it all up. Same on this side. Then I've screened the two together, and that's given us a mat, which I've, again, crunched a bit. Again, again, not ideal in this situation. Um, and uh, the other one is this, where you've um, again reordered to blue, reordered to green, and uh, I've used nice an up to subtract the two, and then I've used an expand to try and crunch it up. Again, this isn't working in this situation, but sometimes it does. So these are just techniques you can use um, in addition to what I've just shown you. And of course, there's many other techniques you can use as well. What I suggest is uh, a really good book on the subject, just on theory in general and um, in relation to putting into practical use, is uh, Digital Compositing for Film and Video by Steve Wright. Um, it's a brilliant book and um, his little flow diagrams he's got in there, even though they're not for shake, um, they pretty much can be translated directly into shake very easily. Um, and another very good book is Encyclopedia of Visual Effects. Uh, by Damien Allen and Brian Connor, um, and that's uh, Apple Pro Training Series. Um, that's pretty much a cookbook on different techniques for visual effects. 
Um, and yeah, it's probably one of my favourite books at the moment. Okay, uh, another tip which I briefly sort of alluded to earlier on is um, don't be afraid to key different regions separately. So for instance, um, I've just done a really quick sort of separation here. So say you, say you had, you were able to get a good key for the body, um, but you had here on your character which uh, needed a bit more work. What you could do is um, build up different regions. Um, so in here, what I've done is I've pulled a really quick key. I'll just zoom in for you so you can look at that. So we've done our first key here, which is key light. And I've done this little rotor shape here, which is just taking care of the hair region. So I'd pull a particular key just to deal with the, the hair um, issues, etc. Um, then what I'd do is I'd reorder that. And then I've pulled a second key, which is doing most of the body. And I've made sure that they're overlapping, so that when I add them together, they're going to um, they're going to be okay. So that there, and then actually that one can just be tweaked a little bit. So there we go. So they overlap. So that's taking care of most of it. And then say I had movement in the legs, or um, in this case we had a problem with there was still compression in the um, in the shadows. So what I'd do is do a third key should come off and I've done a rotor shape for just the lower region and here I'd probably blur this out I haven't done it here I'm just showing you what you can do and again I've screened it together with what was there so that we've added three different keys of three different regions together so that way you can pull a key for individual regions and get the best of um, both worlds um, for each thing rather than trying to do a best fit for all the parts of an image you can um, to specify, um, you know, maybe a harder key for one, introducing a bit of blur maybe for a area that needs a blur, like um, a motion blur area or a shadow, etc. Um, and anything that's got fine detail rather than crushing it, that, so you can get a good map that you might do on the body. Um, for here, you might want to spend a little bit more time and just finesse things, so you can just do a map for the top and just have everything overlapping and use screen or max or whatever you like to um, to just combine all the white areas um, together into one mat and you apply that with a switch mat back to your back to this. So I'll just do that for you now so you can see what the complete the complete thing would look like. So that's what it would look like. You do these three keys, and then um, your final one would be here. Now, within each of these, you could do your edge, your mat, um, your edge mat, your core mat, and again, you know, sort of a garbage mat for each of these. So you can see quickly, you know, keying isn't just a matter of throwing a key light on and you're done. Um, you can end up with very complex um, chains and trees from doing these sorts of things. Right, that's it for this time round. That's Andrew Shanks for creativecar.net. Uh, next time we will deal with the spill suppression.